We're going to set up a Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system here for a, a rocket example. So, you're launching a rocket. This could just be a fun model rocket. And it's going to head up on the y axis. And we'll just set up this arbitrary axis. Okay, y, that's the x direction. And let's say you bought this model rocket kit and you're launching it. And the kit only tells you that you, the rocket travels 1500 feet up. And the engine burns, so it does this for 7 seconds. So we know that at this point here is going to be 1500 feet. But we're going to want to convert that to meters because you always need to work in, well it's easiest to work in uh, the metric system. That's what a lot of these equations are designed for. So first we convert 1500 feet and we want to eliminate feet so we're going to stick that in the bottom. We're going to cancel out. And we want to end up with meters, so we're going to stick that on top. So there's about 3.3 feet in one meter. So 1,500 feet divided by 3.3 meters, or meters per feet. So that's 454. Point five four or five five. We'll just round this up. We'll say that's four hundred fifty. Round up when it's a it's a five. So four hundred fifty five meters. Okay. So we want to know its acceleration, and we can use. Uh, there's a couple useful formulas we should write down. The velocity is change in y over change in time and acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Velocity is a vector, it has a direction, so it's acceleration. Okay, so we, we want to get its acceleration and we know that at this point here is 455 meters and down here we're at zero meters and we know that our time final is 7 seconds and our time initial is going to be you can you can usually pick your time initial unless they give you a specific one but time initial is is usually just 0 seconds so we can get our velocity now and our velocity is going to be our, remember, delta y is the same as just saying your y final minus your y initial over your time final minus your time initial. So our y final was 455 meters. 455 meters. And our y initial, starting from rest in the ground, is 0 meters. Time final, it took seven seconds to go up. Seven seconds minus your time initial, which was zero seconds. So our velocity then is 455 divided by seven. So 65 meters per second, remember, because it's meters per second over here. So, now that we have this, we can figure out our acceleration. And our acceleration is going to be our velocity final minus velocity initial over time final minus time initial. And our velocity final, we know, is 65 meters per second. And our velocity initial well, it's starting from rest in the ground, so that's zero meters per second. 
divide it by time and final, seven seconds minus time initial. <laughs> I always do that. Okay, time initial is zero seconds. You will actually plug in the values. Okay. So 65 meters per second divided by seven seconds. And our acceleration is 9.2857 meters per second squared. We can round this down. We're working with two significant figures, one significant figure. Um, probably should use one, but we'll keep it with 9.3 meters per second squared. Now, in, a, in another little example, just to get a little more familiar with how to use this graphing system, because the heart of physics is knowing how to uh, explain something graphically and to remove words because words are ambiguous and get down to symbols and then determine values and be able to plug in numbers to those symbols and arrive at an exact solution or near an exact solution because many of these equations are estimates. So, in another example we have a a wizard is flying along. This is a popular example. And it's heading this way and it's lost its uh, ability to fly, so this poor little wizard is going to be crashing down now. So it's going to be crashing down towards the earth. And has a velocity of 5 meters per second to the right and it's we'll say it's 500 meters up in the air when it loses loses control and starts to crash down so 500 meters is this distance here's the ground and we want to figure out just what its speed is going to be in the y direction when it does hit the ground. And there's something very important about this equation, which is we're going to set up our axis. So this is y. This is your x axis. Well, this goes towards projectile motion a little bit, but I just want to stick with the kinematics equations first. So when you travel, when you have an object traveling with velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction, what's actually going to happen here is this going to maintain this 5 meters per second to the right, but its velocity is going to change on the y axis. And, and I'll show you just, just why that happens. So in the kinematics equation, we have our y final is equal to your y initial plus your velocity initial. And we're just going to work in the, uh, the y direction here. So velocity initial change in time minus one half acceleration delta t squared. So this is an important equation for motion at constant acceleration. Because uh, in this example that's exactly how we're going to describe uh, the motion with constant acceleration on the y-axis. Because the only acceleration acting on this now, now that it's lost all other forces on it, is going to be from the center of mass gravity pulling down. So the force is going to be gravity pulling down on it. Uh, we'll say, we'll just keep this a little easier. It would be equal to its mass times the, uh, the gravitational uh, acceleration of Earth. We'll just say force gravity. And gravity is going to have an acceleration of g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared and its uh, 
it's going to be negative because remember the convention we use moving up on the y-axis is positive, moving down on the y-axis is negative. So this acceleration is pulling down, so it's going to be a negative acceleration. So we know that our y-final is going to be the ground, it's going to be 0 meters, and our y-initial is going to be 500 meters, plus our velocity initial in the y direction. So here's the velocity in the x direction, but in the y direction it wasn't moving up or down, so it had uh, the velocity initial in the y direction was zero. So zero meters per second and times delta t minus, so I'm going to put a positive here, but the reason being is it's going to be one half neg negative g because that's going to be our acceleration acting is the acceleration of earth pulling us down so these two negatives are going to cancel leaving us with a positive so that's why I'm going to put one half uh, g times delta t squared and we know what g is so the only thing we need to solve now for is t and we have 0 meters per second times t here, so 0 times delta t is going to cancel out. So we have 0 equals 500 meters plus 1 half times, we'll plug in the value for g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared times delta t squared. So we just need to solve for this equation and get t now. So we'll bring, uh, we'll subtract 500 meters from both sides. So it'll be negative 500 meters equals one half. Um, actually, let's let's work that out now. So one half times 9.8 is yeah, of course is <laughs> 4.9 and that's still going to be meters per second squared just to, to count for the units here um, times delta t squared so now we're going to divide both sides by 4.9 so it'll be negative 500 over 4.9 meters per second squared equals delta t squared so now then we're just going to take the square root of both sides and get our answer so the square root of negative so oops and this is a uh, meters so this is actually these meters are going to cancel here leaving you a second squared as units so negative 500 divided by 4.9 is negative 102 seconds squared equals uh, your change in time squared so the square root of negative 102 There we go. So it's going to be ten point one seconds now because this cancelled out from the square root sign, one of the seconds equals change in time. So this wizard is going to take ten point one seconds before it hits the ground and its velocity this whole time just to set you up for 
uh, when you get into project projectile motion, its velocity of the x-axis is going to be constant, constant 5 meters per second. It's just going to be changing in the y direction. Okay, have an excellent day.